I'm Sarah Woodbury, and this is a historical note about the Menai Strait. The Menai Strait is the narrow body of water approximately 16 miles long between mainland Wales and the island of Anglesey, called Anisman in Welsh. At its center point, the strait is roughly 1,600 feet from shore to shore, widening to over 3,000 feet at either end of the strait. The Menai Strait was formed through glacial erosion of the bedrock and was flooded after the end of the Ice Ages. Before the strait was dredged in the modern era, it was possible to walk across the Lavan Sands, located to the east of Bangor, at low tide. Shan Weiss, the town King Edward destroyed to build Beaumaris Castle, was the largest commercial center in North Wales prior to the conquest. And it was located along this ancient pathway, which went from Holyhead through Anglesey to Shan Weiss, across the Lavan Sands to Aber, or Garth Kellen, as it was known in the Middle Ages, over the pass known as Bulca de Vine, across the Conwy River at Caerhine, and then east to Chester. The strait plays an important role in the history of Wales, not only because of this pathway, but because of the physical barrier it presents between Anglesey and the mainland of Wales. The main reason for this are the dangerous tides, which cause very strong currents to flow in both directions through the strait at different times. One of the most treacherous areas is located between the current two bridges, known as the Swellies. A rising tide, meaning a tide coming in, starts at the Carnarvon end of the strait. Um, that's the west, southwest end. The tide rises and it pushes water into the strait. At the same time, water is rising all around Anglesey in a clockwise direction. So when the rising tide reaches the Bomaris end, the north easterly end, it starts entering the strait from that direction too. So basically you have water entering the strait from both directions. You can see how, with what we think is actually the tide going out, how the water in the foreground is moving from west to east, and the water in the middle of the Menai Strait is moving from east to west, indicating how dangerous this could be when it really starts moving fast. So that creates a dangerous situation um, in the center of the strait, in particular where those two tides meet. Once the tide changes, this process is reversed, creating a situation where slack water occurs one hour before high or low tide. And that is the time that you can cross the strait, swim it maybe, or take it in a boat. But you have to obviously continue to be very careful. This dangerous tidal situation has made the Menai Strait a significant barrier for armies interested in taking over North Wales and was the site of one of the greatest Welsh victories during the 1282 war against England, the Battle of Moyle Adon. King Edward had established his base at Ridlan Castle. He had sent Luke de Tanny to Anglesey to attack then Gwynedd from across the strait. So they were trying to catch Llewellyn, who was at Aber or Garth Killen, in a pincer movement. Edward was going to cross the Conwy at Caerhine, and Tanny was going to cross the Menai Strait on a bridge of boats that he had strung from the Anglesey end to somewhere we think a little east of Bangor. We're not totally sure where that was. Tanny jumped the gun and he decided, for reasons of his own, at least according to history, that he was going to try to do this on his own and not wait for King Edward. And this was in part too because the Archbishop of Canterbury was mediating or attempting to mediate a peace between Llewellyn and Edward. So Edward was waiting for the latest message from Llewellyn to get back to him. Um, the day that messenger left Aber, Tanny attacked, November 6, 1282. He sent his men across this bridge of boats. The Welsh, however, were waiting for them on the other side. From the English Chronicles, it quote, when they had reached the foot of the mountain and after a time came to a place at some distance from the bridge, the tide came in with a great flow so that they were unable to get back to the bridge for the debt of water. The Welsh came from the high mountains and attacked them and in fear and trepidation for the great number of the enemy, our men preferred to face the sea than the enemy. They went into the sea, but heavily laden with arms, they were instantly drowned. Over 400 of Tanny's men died, including Tanny himself, several other nobles, and 16 English knights. The Welsh had few casualties. 
what happened was Tanny started across the, the, the bridge of boats at Slackwater. It takes a lot to get 400 men across a bridge of boats, horses. I mean, actually, his army was bigger than 400. So they get onto the beach, and the Levon Sands are this vast, well, 300-foot spread of land. So it takes quite a long time to get across them. Once they were attacked on the North Wales side, on the Aber side, um, they panicked and tried to flee back across the boats. But by the time that happened, the tide had shifted, dumping the entire army into the water. From the Welsh Chronicle of the Princes comes, the king and his host came to Rithlan, and he sent a fleet of ships to Anglesey, and they gained possession of Arvon, and then was made the bridge over the Manai, but the bridge broke, and countless numbers of the English were drowned, and others slain. It is that victory on November 6th that encouraged Llewellyn, only a few weeks later, to travel to Kilmeri, at the behest of the Mortimer brothers, Edmund and Roger, who had said that they saw the way the winds were blowing and were willing to change sides. Maybe now that seems like a crazy idea, but at the time, given this victory, Schwellen thought it was worth it to talk to them. Unfortunately, he then was ambushed on December 11th, 1282, and killed. So, do you think it's plausible that Edward told Tanny to attack I, and break the armistice. I don't know. And, and yeah. had plausible deniability. And well, so, he did, and 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 you know, Tanny may have been like, "I want to do it. I want to do it." Of course, he died. Yeah. So there's really no way to know. The only person who can answer that question was Edward, um, and uh, and and we we generally don't know. I mean, the chronicles say that he went off on his own, but. Um, and, and, and maybe that was in character. I think there's some understanding maybe that was in character. But Edward had a pretty strong grip on his forces, I would have thought. And um, yeah, no, there's, there's no, there's no way to know at this point. Um, it's certainly possible that he was like, well, you know, go try. But the, the initial plan was actually a good one to cross the, to force the, the Conwy River and, and c- go across the Bulk of the Vine because that drops you down in front of Aber. Um, it would have worked. It, may, it might have worked, but um, we'll never know now. Yeah. I found the story of this battle so compelling that I recreated it in Cold My Heart, the first book in the Lion of Wales series. Thanks for watching my video. You can click on the playlist or subscribe to my channel to see more. There'll be a new video next week. If you want to check out my books, click on the link to my webpage.